Welcome to Pathways of Hope. I am Lorna Campos. Illogical, absurd. These are the adjectives that come to my mind as I read Matthew 21, 3 to 43, and 45 to 46. The tenants have come into a straightforward agreement with the owner till the land send me a share of the produce right quite logical and yet when harvest time comes and the owner sends servants to claim his share of the harvest what do the tenants do they beat him one up they stone the other they kill the third what's the logic there and maybe the tenants thought you know, I work so hard, my sweat, my produce. Why will I share it with the owner? They had forgotten that the owner owns the property, tilled the land, put up the fence, made the wine press. Something happened in their thinking. So anyway, the owner sends a second batch and they do the same thing. He sends, tries a third time and says, I will send my son. Surely, surely they will respect my son. You know, at this point, I think the illogical one is the owner. Imagine he gives them not one chance, not only two chances, he'll give them a third chance. He's going to send his son. I mean, gosh, if I were the owner on the first time they, they killed and beat up my servants, I would have sent soldiers to evict them and punish them. So anyway, he sent his son. Surely they will respect him. And the tenants, when they see the son, you would think, oh, this is their chance to, you know, respect the son, respect the owner. What do they do? They say, they say, they say, there's this law that if a property has no heir, we can, anyone can claim that property. So remove the sun, no sun, no air, property ours. Such logic. And, and they went and killed the sun. Logical, illogical. When we look at current events today, and we look at the causes of war, each side thinks they're right. Each side says, I'm correct, and you're the one who's the abuser and intervening there. When we look at relationships and people fighting and each side claiming, I'm correct. And they are each correct. But yet, somehow the logic and illogic just causes more pain and struggle. And how is that? Are we in situations that are so confusing they're so perplexing, we, we don't know what's right. We have decisions to make and what shall we do? Does the end justify the means? And today we ask God for grace for three things. Wisdom, remembering, and good stewardship. We ask God for the grace to be wiser, the gift of wisdom. We ask God for the grace, you know, in this perplexing, logical, illogical complexities of life. We say, Lord, help me to see things from a wider perspective. Help me to see things from my new idea. Help me to see things from the shoes of the other person looking at the situation. Help me to see things from how it affects those around me. And Lord, help me to see things your perspective what's your view here and we pray Lord give me the grace to be wise that I can listen that I can be able to choose what is right and Lord when I am unable to do so when I'm doing I'm on the wrong path alert me wake me up that I may change for my life The second grace we ask for God today is the grace to remember. To remember that He is the owner of our lives. We are the vineyard. 
We are the vineyard that He has cared for, that He has lifted up, that He has protected. And we want to remember, Lord, with every breath I take, that you are for me. And the third grace we ask from God today is the grace to be good stewards. All that we have is not our own. All that we have has been entrusted to us by God. And so we ask Him for grace that we may be good and responsible stewards for the resources, the people, the opportunities given to us. That we do our best, that God may be honored and glorified. That we will do our best, that we can also share these blessings with us. Wisdom, remembering, good stewardship. God bless!